Hi everyone, my name is Sydney and today I'm going to be talking about The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Trubotsky. Before I go into that part of the video, I do just want to throw out a little disclaimer out there saying that I hope all of you are okay during this really weird time. It's such a weird time at the moment where we've got the coronavirus and we are all isolating. So I'm from Australia and at the moment we aren't even in lockdown yet. Um, which boggles my mind because I really think we should be in lockdown but I've been acting as if I'm in lockdown and I think majority of us <laughs> have been acting like we're in lockdown. Obviously it's a time that's really scary and confronting. No one wants to get sick, everyone wants to carry on with their own lives and work and distract themselves but I really think that this is a time that is kind of exactly what the world needs right now, that we do need to have this time to turn inward and focus on ourselves. I guess it's really a time for you to be able to dive into different parts of you that you never explored. It's funny because today, um, this is like my first video I've made in forever. <laughs> I don't even know where my last video was, but I decided to put on eyeliner today and I haven't really worn eyeliner in a really long time and <laughs> and um putting it on today was really fun but also like I forgot it's hard <laughs> to do. I kind of love it and I kind of missed doing it. It's really weird. I keep looking at myself in my little cam cam on the side like who is she? It's just really funny to me because I used to do this kind of makeup when I was in high school so it's kind of like I'm looking at past Sid a little but past Sid makes up me so it's kind of really nice as well. Also just <laughs> a little update. Um, I got another tattoo! <laughs> um, if you all are like, oh my god, what is that? I got a snake and I love her so, so much. If you guys want me to do a video about my tattoos and what they mean to me, I can do that for you. Sid the snake. Sid the snake. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's my little update. I really hope that you're all doing okay and that if you ever need anything or if you need any questions answered, feel free to message me or leave a comment down below. Um, I'm all ears and we're all in this together, so don't think you're alone because you never were and you're not through this as well. So moving on, um, I'm going to be talking about perks today and this is one of my favorite books ever. Like this is the second time I'm reading this book and I read it in two days and just forgot how much I freaking freaking love this book. This book is also made into a movie so if you love Emma Watson and if like me you had the biggest crush on Logan Lemon <laughs> back in the day then you will love the movie. I really love that for this being my second time reading it and I've already seen the movie as well. I really was reading it in Logan Lerman's voice and kind of Emma Watson's as well. How they say Charlie, like it's very American. So um, if I'm <laughs> if I go into talking about the characters and I turn a little American, um, <laughs> that's why. I just, I can't not see him as Charlie. Those of you who haven't read this book or seen the movie, I'll give you a little bit of a rundown as to what it's about, but you really, really, really need to read this book and you really, really, really <laughs> need to watch the movie because it is so fucking good. So basically we follow the main character of Charlie, <laughs> Charlie, and he's a freshman. You can tell from the, the moment you start reading this book that he is introverted, how much of an observer he is. You also see this side to Charlie which is very intelligent. He ends up making friends called Sam and Patrick and you just fall in love with them as you fall in love with Charlie and I fucking... I cannot express how much I love these characters and how they make me feel. Like this book, this book literally warms my heart. Like it actually warms my heart. And it's just so easy to read a book that makes you feel that way. The biggest reason why I love this book is because I can see so much of myself in Charlie. And that's not because I'm introverted myself. I know that I'm more of an extroverted person, but I have levels of introvertedness in me where I love to have time on my own 
and I love to reflect and observe. So this book is basically about growth and overcoming moments of struggle. We all go through stuff. The best thing I can say about the negatives in your life is they shape you into who you are. They shape you into who you're going to become because they build you into a stronger, more confident person. And they question your decision making for the future. <laughs> Before I go into the spoiler section of the video, um, this book also has my favourite quote of all time in it, so I will just share that with you. We accept the love we think we deserve. I'm going to go into the spoilery section, so if you haven't read this book, go read it, come back, and we can talk. Here we go. In three, two, one. This book highlights society from a historical point of view, but also highlights the pathway to change. I love how this book targeted a lot of different themes. For example, the comparison of sexes. Women have for too long been looked at as weak and sensitive, and men have been looked at as superior. They hold strength and power. But I think it's really, really cool that we are turning those roles around. We can be just as much each other as not. Stephen really highlights how men have always been shunned for showing emotion. He really shows this through Charlie's father. There was that moment they watched the final of the TV show MASH and his father went to make himself a sandwich and Charlie caught him crying. Charlie's dad reacted in a way of saying this will be our little secret, okay? And then you've got Charlie. Charlie cries a lot. <laughs> you can see his sensitivity. You can see how things affect him. He's an empath. Men are sensitive beings. I don't know why they, as a whole, have to suppress these feelings to put on a masculine front. Stephen also highlights sexual orientation and how it's okay to love someone of the same sex. Another thing I really loved within this book was the importance of consensual sex. This book is, it's really interactive, so within this book um, Charlie is talking about different mixtapes and books. And it was really beautiful because in moments of me pausing the book were moments where I put the songs on that Stephen talked about and it made the experience so much more beautiful and I actually found my new favourite song <laughs> through this book. You should check it out. It's called Dusk by Genesis. Charlie made a mixtape for Patrick because he was his secret Santa and that was one of the songs that was on the mixtape and I just bloody love it. Page 66. I spent all night working on it and I hope Patrick likes it as much as I do. Especially the second side. I hope it's the kind of second side that he can listen to whenever he drives alone and feel like he belongs to something whenever he's sad. I hope it can be that for him. I had an amazing feeling when I finally held the tape in my hand. I just thought to myself that in the palm of my hand there was this one tape that had all of these memories and feelings and great joy and sadness right there in the palm of my hand. And I thought about how many people have loved those songs and how many people got through a lot of bad times because of those songs and how many people enjoyed good times with those songs and how much those songs really mean. I think it would be great to have written one of those songs. I bet if I wrote one of them I would be very proud. I hope the people who wrote those songs are happy. I hope that they feel it's enough. I really do because they've made me happy. And I'm only one person. I'm starting to see a real trend in the kind of books Bill gives me to read. And just like the tape, and just like the tape of songs, it is amazing to hold each of them in the palm of my hand. They are all my favourites. All of them. This book is so beautiful and I can't, I actually can't. I can't even. <laughs> of course, the classic Asleep by the Smiths. It's really weird. Instead of having this warm feeling when I listen to that song, I always feel upset. I think because the first time I read this book, the first time I watched the movie, I just cried because of what happens. Yeah, it always brings me back to that part. Whilst we have this interactive game with songs, we also have this interactive game with books. And I personally, from finishing this book, have gone on to this journey of <laughs> wanting to read more classics. So within this isolation, um, I guess till June, I don't know when, um, I really want to isolate myself with 
classic books. I love how also Charlie, <laughs> he does acid for the first time and I just, I love, <laughs> I love it. it. Takes me back to the first time I read this book when a friend of mine back in high school were laughing about the whole scene where he sees a tree and thinks it's a dragon. <laughs> this page on 23 just really, just really highlighted how is how much of a sweetheart Charlie is. So cute. How long have you been going out? I asked. Then they started laughing. Really laughing hard. What's so funny? I said. We're brother and sister, Patrick said, still laughing. But you don't look alike, I said. That's when Sam explained that they were actually stepsister and stepbrother since Patrick's dad married Sam's mum. I was very happy to know that because I would really like to ask Sam on a date someday. I really would. She's so nice. I feel ashamed though because that night I had a weird dream. I was with Sam and we were both naked and her legs were spread over the sides of the couch and I woke up and I never felt that good in my life. But I also felt bad because I saw her naked without her permission. I think that I should tell Sam about this and I really hope it does not prevent us from maybe making up inside jokes of our own. It would be very nice to have a friend again. I would like that even more than a date. <laughs> This is another part that just <laughs> just shows how sweet Charlie fucking is. It's on page 130. I didn't feel like reading that night, so I went downstairs and watched a half hour long commercial that advertised an exercise machine. <laughs> they kept flashing a 1-800 number, so I called it. The woman who picked up the other end of the phone was named Michelle. And I told Michelle that I was a kid and did not need an exercise machine, but I hoped she was having a good night. <laughs> That's when Michelle hung up on me, and I didn't mind one bit. Page 27. My favourite line, and I've already said it, but I'm going to say it again because... My heart. Charlie, we accept the love we think we deserve. My god. Just take a moment to really think about this line, and what this line means to you. Just take a moment. That will forever be my favorite quote ever. For majority of people who've read this book, one of our favorite parts will forever be the moment where they feel infinite. This is different to the movie. They're listening to Landslide by Fleetwood Mac, not Heroes. <laughs> it's very different, it's very different. Oh my God. There are so many, <laughs> there are so many favorite parts in this book, oh my God. On page 40, Patrick pointed at me and said something to Bob. He's something, isn't he? Bob nodded his head. Patrick then said something I don't think I'll ever forget. He's a wallflower. And Bob really nodded his head, and the whole room nodded their head. And I started to feel nervous in the Bob way, but Patrick didn't let me get too nervous. He sat down next to me. You see things, you keep quiet about them, and you understand. Oh my god, my heart. I was sitting on the floor of a basement of my first real party between Sam and Patrick, and I remember that Sam introduced me as her friend to Bob. And I remember that Patrick had done the same for Brad. And I started to cry. And nobody in that room looked at me weird for doing it. And then I really started to cry. Bob raised his drink and asked everyone to do the same. To Charlie. And the whole group said, to Charlie. I didn't think I was going to cry. <laughs> Page 45. This is just like so me. I just can't. <laughs> When I got home, I had to mow the lawn for my allowance. And not that bit, not that bit, this bit. <laughs> and I didn't mind one bit. I just listened to the music and breathed in the day and remembered things. Things like walking around the neighborhood and looking at the houses and the lawns and the colorful trees. And the colorful trees and having that be enough. We all love this part. I mean, let's be real, let's be real. We all love this part. On page 74 and 75, this is between Sam and Charlie. I know that you know that I like Craig, and I know that I told you not to think of me that way. And I know that we can't be together like that, but I want to forget all those things for a minute, okay? Okay. I want to make sure that the first person you kiss loves you. This happens after the Secret Santa gift swaps. Then I gave Patrick and Sam their presents. I even wrapped them up special. I use the Sunday funny papers because they are in colour. Patrick tore through his. Sam didn't rip any of the paper. She just plucked off the tape and they looked at what was inside each box. 
I gave Patrick on the road, Naked Lunch, The Stranger, This Side of Paradise, Peter Pan, and a separate piece. I gave Sam To Kill a Mockingbird, The Catcher in the Rye, The Great Gatsby, Hamlet, Walden, and The Fountainhead. Under the books was a card that I wrote using the typewriter Sam bought me. The card said that these were my copies of all my favourite books, and I wanted Sam and Patrick to have them because they were my two favourite people in the whole world. And the way this book ends, page 231. So if this does end up being my last letter, please believe that things are good with me, and even when they're not, they will be soon enough. And I will believe the same about you. Love always, Charlie. So if you haven't read this book and you've made it all the way here, <laughs> I really hope that you go and read it for yourself. It's all about growth and it's all about struggles within growth. How we impact each other and how we can help one another. So yeah, <laughs> I really love this book and I really hope that you love it too. That you enjoyed this video and that you're all okay during this weird fucking time that we're all in. Make the most of this time. Stay positive. Look after yourself. Work on self-love. And wait for the day where you can fucking hug your friends again and squish 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 them. <laughs> I will see you guys in my next video which should be very very soon. So as usual, bye!